Have you ever wondered if our reality is just a computer simulation? As technology advances and our understanding of the universe deepens, the possibility that we're living in a simulated world becomes increasingly intriguing. Welcome to the Tech Factories, where we'll be delving into the fascinating topic of the simulation hypothesis. The simulation hypothesis is the idea that our reality is not what it seems, and that we are actually living in a computer simulation created by a more advanced civilization. This idea has been around for centuries, but it gained mainstream attention in the early 2000s, thanks in part to the work of philosopher Nick Bostrom. Bostrom's argument is based on the idea that as technology advances, it will become increasingly possible to create highly realistic virtual worlds, and that if a civilization were able to reach a point where they could create a simulation as realistic as our own reality, it would be more likely that we're living in a simulation than not. But if we are living in a simulation, what is the purpose of it? Some argue that it could be for the benefit of the simulators, allowing them to study human behavior or even manipulate events in our world. Others suggest that it could be for our own benefit, as a way for us to experience a certain type of reality or to learn certain lessons. The idea that our world could be simulated is becoming increasingly plausible with the rapid advancement of technology and the ability to create highly realistic virtual worlds. But is it possible? And if it is, what does it mean for our understanding of reality and our place in the universe? As we delve deeper into the topic, we'll be looking at the evidence and arguments for and against the idea that our world is a computer simulation, and the possible implications and ethical considerations of such a hypothesis. But before we go any further, let's take a moment to define what exactly we mean by simulation. A simulation is a model of a system or process, created for the purpose of understanding or predicting the behavior of the system or process. In the case of the simulation hypothesis, we're talking about a computer simulation of reality, created by a more advanced civilization. Now, you might be thinking, why would a more advanced civilization want to create a simulation of reality? Well, there are a few possible reasons. One is that it could be a way for the simulators to study human behavior or manipulate events in our world. Another possibility is that the simulation is for our own benefit, as a way for us to experience a certain type of reality or to learn certain lessons. But the question remains, is it even possible for a civilization to create a simulation as realistic as our own reality? And if it is, what kind of technology would be required to create such a simulation? One of the main arguments for the simulation hypothesis is the concept of computationalism, which states that the universe can be seen as a giant computer. Proponents of this idea point to the fact that our universe seems to follow mathematical laws, much like a computer program. They argue that the behavior of subatomic particles can be described using algorithms, and that the universe itself can be seen as a vast computational system. Another argument for the simulation hypothesis is the advancement of technology, which has allowed us to create highly realistic virtual worlds and simulate increasingly complex systems. This has led some to believe that it may be possible for a civilization to create a simulation as realistic as our own reality. But, there are also arguments against the simulation hypothesis. One is the problem of the simulation argument proposed by Nick Bostrom which states that one of the three possibilities is true, either we are in a simulation, or we are the last civilization which will die out before creating any simulation, or the human race will go extinct before the technology to run a simulation like ours is possible. The argument is not a proof and it's been heavily debated, we would expect to see signs of it, such as glitches or inconsistencies in the simulation, and that we haven't yet observed any such signs. But, some argue that the simulators could have made the simulation so realistic that we wouldn't be able to detect it. Another argument is that if we are living in a simulation, it's hard to know what the limits of the simulation are and what lies beyond it. Some argue that the simulators could be limited by the technology they have, and that the reality beyond the simulation could be vastly different from what we know. So, as we can see, there are arguments on both sides of the debate, 
and it's clear that more research and evidence is needed to determine if the simulation hypothesis is true or not. But regardless of whether or not the hypothesis is true, it's important to consider the implications and ethical considerations of such an idea. If it were true that we are living in a simulation, it would fundamentally change our understanding of reality and our place in the universe. It could also raise ethical questions about the rights of simulated beings and the responsibility of those who created the simulation. If the simulation hypothesis were true, it would fundamentally change our understanding of reality and our place in the universe. It could also raise ethical questions about the rights of simulated beings and the responsibility of those who created the simulation. It could also have an impact on the way we think about our own mortality, about the nature of consciousness and about the ultimate goal of our existence. If we are living in a simulation, it could mean that our reality is not ultimate and that there's something more beyond it. On the other hand, if the simulation hypothesis is false and we are living in a truly objective reality, it could have implications for certain religious or philosophical beliefs. It's worth noting that the simulation hypothesis is still a topic of debate and scientists and philosophers have different opinions on it. But it's definitely an interesting topic to think about, and it has been explored in popular culture and science fiction. Regardless of whether or not the hypothesis is true, it's important to keep an open mind and continue to explore the possibilities and implications of this idea. As technology advances and our understanding of the universe deepens, we may be closer to discovering the true nature of our reality. Thank you for tuning in to this series on the simulation hypothesis. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more science and technology content. And don't forget to share your thoughts and theories about the simulation hypothesis in the comments below.